just how easy is 3D printing? I'm gonna show you. Spiking bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from spikybits.com, and today we are talking 3D printers. I know it's a big buzzword out there, and in 2020, technology is kind of at the point where it's it's really we're kind of taking a look at this and just being like, okay, is this a thing? Well, all right, it might be a thing. I need to know more. Fortunately, our friends over at Titan Forge sent us an AnyCubic Photon printer to help promo uh, their miniatures. They have a, a huge, robust offering of uh, 3D prints. Um, STL files over on their Patreon page. They also sell resin miniatures. So, you know, this is kind of something for everybody. And uh, the reason I agreed to all this, besides, you know, I was like, oh, well, it's about time we, we actually got into this, is the fact that I dealt with them several years ago. They did a Kickstarter five, six years ago. Um, they ran into some problems with the fulfillment. It took a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, they got everything out the door to everybody. And that really speaks volumes because a lot, I'm sure you can agree, a lot of Kickstarters out there come and go in this industry. And well, I would say more actually go than actually fulfill and get all their stuff out the door. So if you can do that, fast forward to now, I uh, was speaking and I actually have one of their bases I painted up um, for uh, for their stuff here. Um, this is one of their demon bases that I actually used on, on my demons because I couldn't find the bases I was using at the time and we had to use some substitutes. So long story short, I think they're a great company, uh, not just to promo with, but also to kind of back on, uh, you know, the Patreon over there. And uh, now is a great time to do it because it's March, it's March Madness. We're probably all working from home. Now's a great time to learn. And they have a kind of a big deal going on right now on their Patreon. So I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on this, but they did pay for the printer <laughs> that we're gonna show you our workflow on. So I feel like we're gonna to touch on it. Uh, like I said, I haven't seen a deal this good out there for uh, STL files uh, from any of the folks doing these Patreon pages. You can kind of see right here, this is, this is their big open post. This kind of shows everything you get. It's almost 200. Uh, different, I guess they call them uh, resources or something. But I mean, you've got the cyberpunk uh, stuff right here, which is this really cool mech suit that I'm gonna show you a little bit of today. And so you get all of that stuff, all the cyberpunk stuff, all the Dragon Empire stuff, all the Amazonians, which are kind of like the not lizard men, uh, some RPG stuff, you know, if you need your basic classes for some D&D &D or some RPG stuff, they got that. The welcome package actually comes with some bases. Uh, one of the Lords of Fury, which is the base I just showed you, that model was mounted to it uh, for their Kickstarter many years ago. So it's almost 180 different files. And then, of course, lots of terrain. Don't know if you're going to want to print terrain out on a resin printer. Probably not good for that, just FYI. But we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, 10 buck pledge gets you all of these models, uh, but that's only for March, 2020. So if you're watching this video and it's about to be the end of the month, rolling into April, you might want to think about just throwing them 10 bucks. I mean, <laughs> it's 10 bucks. Uh, once you get all this equipment to actually 3d print, you're going to need something to 3d print. And this is a great place to start right here. So I definitely can't say enough good things about Titan Forge's, uh, current March Madness special over on Patreon. So what are you gonna actually need to get started with 3D printing? Like I said, this is a basic overview. I'm gonna kind of show you some of my workflow and let you decide on how much uh, you think this will work for you. Or maybe you just wanna buy resin miniatures, you know, like, like we normally do. And of course you can always get resin miniatures from Titan Forge, but you know, it's just a hobby inside of the hobby that in all honesty, Really, if you're comfortable building an army display board or maybe um, a terrain table or a larger forge roll kit, if you've ever been comfortable with those sort of things, you'll probably be comfortable with 3D printing, to be quite honest with you. If you just prefer to buy your stuff already assembled or perhaps painted, maybe 3D printing isn't isn't the thing for you. And that's okay. There's, there's all walks of life out there. So some extra stuff that you're going to need. Um, once you decide, hey, I want to do this 3D printing thing, you're gonna need some pickle jars, or you can get the anti-cubic wash and cure station. All these links will be below in the comments and also the description, but you're gonna need a couple pickle jars. You're gonna need some isopropyl alcohol, which is kind of going for a premium right now because of the current world state of affairs, unfortunately. Uh, you're gonna need this nail, this curing station right here. It's a UV curing station, which um, will actually cure your miniatures. Just some um, reusable towels, you're gonna need um, also some, um, what is this, uh, stuff for cleaning monitors. It's like that uh, 
uh, that special material, I forget what it's called. I had, a, I had a pause and collect my thoughts. It's called microfiber. You're gonna need some microfiber cleaning cloths and that's actually for the printer. Um, and that's super important and we'll talk about that here in a second. I actually built a air handler kind of carbon scrubber system that I saw in another YouTube video and I'll link that below of course as well. Um, just because this with the anti-cubic photon, there's, um, there's no uh, smell adapter. So it's gonna actually put out exhaust some people it annoys them some people say it stinks up the room i don't have any smell buds so i just wanted to make sure the air because i'm in my office i want to make sure the air was as clean as possible so that added some to the cost and i'll you know i'll put the parts list for that uh below as well if you do decide you want to get something like this maybe you already have an exhaust vent kind of built in for your airbrushing and stuff and this is no big deal but it's something to be aware of especially if you're printing at home you know you, maybe your significant other or something like that might not like this so it's just something to keep in mind purely optional but you know safety first so now that you have everything it's time to print and you have to start digitally so you're going to need some of those digital files now the Unfortunately, where we're at in 2020 is there's a bunch of different programs out there that do a lot of different things very good specifically, but not one program that does everything you're going to need super good and it's the only thing you need to stay in. There's a lot of proprietary stuff out there. So just be aware that your workflow is going to take a little tweaking. Uh, I use three, four different programs, I think, currently to print a model, to pull it in and print it out. But it's actually not that hard, believe it or not. So this is called Cheeto Box right here. Cheeto Box. I don't know. That's how I think it's pronounced. And this is a, uh, this is a great um, custom 3D editing software for files. Now, a lot of folks like to use uh, Prusa, which is an actual pr 3D printer manufacturer, to bring in their files, do auto supports, and auto supports are those roller coaster tycoon look, tycoon looking things uh, that you've seen in different places. I don't think you're going to be able to see me pulling in these files. But once you have a 3D print, and this is very vague, and we're not going to spend as much time on this. I could spend a whole video showing you a workflow on how to do all this, and we might just create that in the future. But I just want to give you a workflow overview of of how hard or easy, it's pretty much easy, uh, 3D printing kind of is. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna find my Titan Forge Mac. Um, I can't see it over there, so I have to look over here. So here is the body. So here's just the body. So this is the cockpit, boom, it pulls it in. And you can do all sorts of cool things. Now, I personally like this program because I can manipulate it three-dimensionally and do all sorts of different stuff. And indeed, you're gonna want to manipulate things three-dimensionally to get it to fit on your plate and uh, and kind of get in here and kind of see what's going on. So that's your first step is to pull in the particular model you want to work. And then you're gonna actually create the supports that you're gonna need for any particular model. And a lot of folks like to use the auto supports, which is really good in Prusa. This particular model here, it's more um, advanced where you're gonna wanna go in here and actually do some of this stuff yourself. Um, and you can do different tricks like create the raft and the raft is a thing at the bottom that's gonna actually support the miniature to your plate. Because remember when you print, you're actually printing upside down. So this is what it looks like to us. But when you're printing it, it's actually gonna print uh, well, the whole space, actually, I just want to orient. It. So it's going to print like this. So you're going to want to make sure that this is actually supported to the top. So that's what we have to create these supports for. And with a little swoosh magic here, I'll pull in that file that's already done. And here it is. You can see all the supports. We've got large supports. We've got small supports. we got everything that I think is going to need uh, to actually keep it from falling into your vat. And you don't, wanna, you don't want models to fall into your vat because once it falls into your vat of uh, uncured resin, it's kind of a nightmare to kind of separate it and stuff. And we'll probably do a whole video on... Uh, failed prints and how to reset your printer because it, it's it can be a little difficult so you long story short you want to be as thorough as possible when it comes to this and uh, that's just kind of a way, the way it is right there and you can use a bunch of different tools i like this particular program right here because what's going to happen is you see all these red areas not the raft but these red areas up underneath here are actually um, the areas that you're going to want uh, to support the most because they're going to put the high, have the highest stress in their little shelves 
Um, and then you can do different things. You can run this actually through another full um, another program called a validator because what the validator is going to do is to show any areas that aren't supported when this actually goes to print. Because remember, it's printing this thing in little slices. And here you can see the slices that it's actually going to print um, moving up and down. Actually, it would be more like this right here. Or you could just move your cursor and you'll kind of see those that line right there creating showing you the areas that it's going to create so you can run it through a validator it'll show you where any islands are that aren't supported so you can add the supports before you send it to the print to the printer i actually have to use another program from that to create the print file throw it on the flash drive hook it up to the computer and then we can hit the magical print button now, yeah, I skipped some steps, some settings, things like that. That's all stuff that you're going to want to watch a couple of different videos on to learn. We'll do a video on it eventually. This is, again, just a brief overview. So here's the print screen. I just hit print. Um, it's already gone through a couple of layers, it looks like. It's layer 7 of 881. This is not for that model that I showed you. This is for a dwarf that I'm going to show you that I actually printed out. My very first printed miniature was... It's so adorable. So seven layers out of 881. I believe this was at a uh, half 0.05 millimeter slices. Uh, so it didn't seem like, you know, that much. It's about three hours and 24 minutes to print this. And it's starting with the base because the base is attached to the platform. Three and a half hours later, it's going to go through, it's going to finish, it's going to raise up and it's going to say, hey, I'm done and it'll beep at you. And then that's when it starts to get a little messy, but not too messy. Now at that point, you're going to reach into your printer, you're going to unscrew your print head right here, and your model will be attached to it. But you need to put on some nitrate gloves, nitrate plastic gloves, because the, the uncured resin uh, is going to get all over your hands, and the only way to clean it off is isopropyl alcohol. You don't want to get that stuff on your clothes, so please, safety first, use some nitrate rubber gloves and also probably put some eye protection on too. I always uh, wear my goggles as well. So you're gonna get this out, it's gonna be messy. You're gonna have to have some you know, um, uh, rags or paper towels or something like that, something that isn't gonna get a bunch of uh, dust and debris on. And you're gonna have your model right there. And all you're gonna have to do is separate the model from the print plate. Now they give you a little plastic scraper, which is probably what you're gonna to wanna to use. However, you can use a metal scraper, but you wanna be very, very careful because you see these gouges in this plate right here that you can visibly see in the video. That was from using a metal scraper. This is an aluminum plate, so you wanna be careful when you're using a metal scraper because you literally scrape into your aluminum plate. So it's better to use uh, the plastic ones that they give you use a little bit more force to pop things off. And there's some techniques and things to your bases and your rafts that will allow you to get you know, your, your scraper underneath there and do that thing. From that point, you're gonna to wanna to dunk your miniature in a isopropyl alcohol bath. That's to clean it, um, to get any uncured resin off uh, that, you, that you might see on here. I actually have some on this model that I'll show you here in a second that's all printed up. And then you're gonna cure it. Here's the picture I showed you earlier, if you might remember, and you can see these are actually little pickle jars and they, there's a little handle on it and it pulls up and I filled two of them up with isopropyl alcohol to kind of do like a double dip type deal, kind of like a sanitizer if you've ever been in the uh, restaurant industry or the food industry right there. You can see the little uh, plastic scraper over here and I've got a plastic bristle brush as well. So I dunk it, shake it about, dunk it again into more clean isopropyl alcohol and that has to be over 90 percent very important uh, to get all those impurities off and then I wipe you know I wipe the miniature into this uh, but you want to make sure that you get you don't have any particulate or anything on your miniature because then you're gonna cure it now if you're using supports and things like I showed you you're gonna want to take your supports off at this point you could even dunk the miniature in hot water and it'll free up um, a lot of the supports because it isn't cure yet it's still kind of like soft ish resin so now is a great time to use your clippers use your exacto blade and clean up the miniature as best you can before you cure it and actually harden those supports onto it so that's just a pro tip that I've learned. Um, <laughs> if you harden it, you can go back. Obviously, it'll just be like clipping plastic and things that we're used to, but you might as well just save yourself a little bit of effort at that point, I feel like. And once you've got your miniature all cleaned up to the point you're satisfied, you got your sprues off, you got any gouges or anything that you don't want, or not gouges, any little... Um, 
uh, maybe not mold lines, but like connection points on the miniature cleaned off, everything shaved down flush. It's time to actually cure your miniature in your easy bake oven. Now this is using just standard, like, you know, UV nail cleaner and obviously the pickle uh, jar method right there. But uh, what I wanted to tell you was that uh, Anticubic actually makes a wash and cure station now, which I've also been using. It's pretty dope, but it is an additional cost when you can just kind of get the stuff that you might already have, or, you know, it's a little bit less expensive. So you're going to put it in there for about 30 minutes, or you could do a couple of runs of like two or three minutes. Uh, this particular model I'll put in the comments below has a couple of different settings. So you just kind of um, cook your model in to your liking, really. And here he is, my very first printed, 3D printed miniature courtesy of Titan Forge. Uh, they sent me this model. They're like, hey, this is easy. Print this one. I'm like, okay, fair enough. And then you get your confidence up and you're like, oh, I can do this. It's cool. And then you realize that nah, it's pretty much playing roller, roller coaster tycoon, uh, getting the rest of the files ready. But I really enjoy it. And uh, it's kind of something I was trained on um, in college as well. So uh, I'm, I'm super stoked. And I mean, the detail on this model is uh, just incredible, considering that this already has a primer coat on it. Believe it or not, uh, I printed this using white resin, very similar to this. Like this is one of their bases that you get in, um, in their welcome pack, I think on Patreon. And like I said, 180 files, 180 STL files, basically miniatures for 10 bucks. It's kind of crazy right now. Like check them out over on Patreon. It's kind of uh, bananas value right there. So I don't know if this guy is over there. They actually sent me this one. This was part of, I think their February um, Dwarven uh, thing right there. But I mean, check out all the detail. It's got a detail base. It's all ready to go out through a magnet on it. So I could uh, just throw them in my case and maybe paint them up or play D and D or something like that. But I mean, I think very, very cool uh, miniature just to kind of start out with and great looking detail a little pirate dwarf no one suspects a pirate dwarf and doing his best captain morgan pose right there was with, with his peg leg uh super super dope so that is pretty much it for this one um i tried to give you a, as brief of an overview as i can obviously there's tons more to talk about on every one of those steps uh, lots of lessons learned going forward i've learned so much in the past month or so um about 3d printing and no doubt if you start that journey, you will learn a lot as well. What works for me might not work for you, but I have learned a lot. So hopefully it can help everybody out there. So that is it for this one. Make sure you check out uh, Titan Forge is uh, Patreon. It's March Madness. It's incredible value. I can't say enough good things about it right there. And, you know, uh, any cubic photons, a great printer. Any cubic photon S is a great printer, although the settings are a little bit better on the regular any cubic but you might have to build yourself an exhaust. So there's a lot of choices out there. It's gonna take a little bit of research. Hit me up with any questions you might have. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. And again, hit me up with any questions uh, that you might have about 3D printing or any other ideas out there about uh, this particular topic, which is uh, super exciting, but very daunting at the same time. So it's actually pretty easy if you take it in small digestible chunks.